Hey everybody, my name's Slick. Welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna provide you with a full guide from level zero to 35. I'm gonna show you everything that I would do now with the knowledge that I've gained from playing Elyon to remain the most efficient during this phase of the game. I'm gonna provide you general tips and knowledge throughout the video to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success moving forward. Before we continue, I post Elyon videos every other day. If this is something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. This video is going to be made for new players and those who are looking to create alts. If you already have a main character, I recommend skipping the prologue if you can. If this is your first ever character, playing through the prologue is going to be beneficial for you. It's going to help you understand how the game feels and get you familiar with your character's starting abilities. I will be playing this through the Antari side, so there may be some differing quests or pacing, but I'll do my best to provide information and tips that can be followed easily regardless of the realm you choose. I will also not be showing every single quest. I'll cut to the areas where there's information for me to give so you can play, then pause at the next section and continue like this rather than needing to follow along exactly how I'm playing. My first general tip would be that when you're using your wingsuit, make sure you pay attention to the little line. If you press F right when the wing is in the middle, you'll get what's called a perfect leap and this will maximize flight time. You can also press space again to put the wings away or to redeploy them. Keep in mind that fall damage is a thing in the game. Make sure you're always equipping new gear so you can continue to do the most damage. Keep an eye out for these archives as collecting these is a free quest and it'll give you a book that you can add to your collection. Adding these books to your collections will give you permanent stats for your character. You can open the collections interface by pressing equals. If you're not in a clan, I recommend joining one as they provide a lot of great daily rewards. Keep any XP potions you get to use after your level 40. Learning skills doesn't cost anything, so learn them as you level up. I recommend trying every skill at least once so you can learn what does the most damage and what feels best for you. Skill points are very important in this game and I recommend looking over every single ability before deciding what you want to put your points in when you get them. This is only to maximize damage per point. Keep in mind you can always reset these skills at any point for no cost. Early on, whenever you receive runestones, be sure to equip them as each of them do give skill points per their rune level. After getting your jetboard, I recommend dragging it to the F key hotbar so you can access it quicker. Remember that you can press the end key to auto travel to your next quest. Pulling mobs together to use all of your abilities on is going to be much quicker and more efficient than using them on single targets. Most cutscenes can be skipped by pressing escape. At this point, you should have received your third red runestone. I recommend reading over these, but ultimately you will most likely be taking the one that has the highest percentage used by your class. Around this point, you're going to end up receiving your first pet. Now this pet is temporary, but it's going to help you with picking up items and also give you a slight XP boost. You can open the pet menu with L. At this point, the story is going to require you to reach a certain level before you can continue. To reach this level requirement, you're going to be offered green quests. I would highly recommend grabbing every single one of these. If you've noticed so far, most quests in Elyon are completed upon achieving the objective. You don't have to go back to the quest clerk. Remember to keep an eye on your skill attribute points because you'll be receiving them with level ups and runestone equips. At this point, you're going to receive your first Sephiroth weapon. This weapon is going to allow you to equip it with six runestones of any type. 
This weapon is going to be your best friend until you reach level 42 to get the second Sephiroth weapon. Keep in mind you can only equip level 3 or below runes in here, but still that's going to be extremely helpful going forward. Once again we're at a leveling wall, go ahead and grab those green quests and complete them. After reaching the required level, we're going to press M and go to the solo dungeon goblin cave. Keep in mind that most bosses are immune to your CC effects, so play around that. Taking too long to kill bosses and elites will cause them to go enraged and they will hit faster and harder. After defeating the boss, you're going to receive a reward box. Go ahead and open that for a chance at better gear. You can exit the dungeon by clicking the button to the bottom left of the map. At this point you should be familiar with the formula. Reach the required level, go to a new settlement, grab all of the green quests, reach the next level requirement, and repeat. Be sure to keep on the lookout for these archives. I know I mentioned them before, but I want to make sure that you're keeping up with these so you can get free stats for your character. In the treasure room, you can sprint, jump, whatever. The only thing you cannot do is get caught by these lizard men. You can keep holding to do the crates until the lizard men are right about next to you, then you just have to back up or move off of the crate. Treasure rooms are a great way to make early money, so be sure to complete these. Rune stones can be polished for additional effects. Keep in mind that to upgrade a runestone, you need a runestone of the same level, and it can be any type. I recommend not using the balance runestone, as you can turn that in for a collection later on. I would advise keeping your runestone levels pretty low here, as you're going to receive a lot of level 3s and level 4s later on. You're going to want to keep as much runestone dust as you can. In addition to turning in the archives, you can also turn in runestones to receive bonus max HP. This isn't a requirement. At this point, you're going to receive your first Realm vs. Realm quest. This will be the first time that you may experience PvP. Keep in mind though that that is not required and all it's asking you to do is to defeat the Vulpin NPCs. PvP is fun though, so feel free to go ahead and try it. Once again, let's grab all these quests and get them started. Hope you enjoyed that little bit of fun editing I had right there. So the reason we're wanting to complete all of these green quests is because you're going to receive rewards for completing all of the quests on the settlement. This time around, we ended up getting a blue skill attribute scroll. I would highly recommend going back and completing any green quests that you've skimped on so far. At this point, you'll have some attendance rewards. Go ahead and collect those. The playtime rewards and the attendance rewards reset at 8 p.m. EST every day. Congratulations, you've made it to the first main foothold for your realm. After completing this quest, you're going to receive a level 3 rune stone box. I highly recommend spending these on fate runes early. My reason being that the fate tree offers a lot of great bonuses, but the main reasoning being that at 33 fate rune points, you can select an attribute that gives you 9 points in every other rune slot. This is extremely sought after by most players, and I highly recommend you pursue this as well. 
you're now gonna be given your first taste of equipment enhancement. I recommend here that you only use blue enhancement stone, save your purple stones. After running around and completing some main quests, you're gonna be introduced to the Laurel Shop. Laurel Wreaths increase drop rate. Transcendent Stones and Sandy Foothill Keys will allow you to receive accessories and do more Transcendent Dungeons. You'll also want to keep note of those Memories of the Moment, as combining three of those with Broken Down Purple Gear will provide you a Breakthrough Box, which will give you any Breakthrough piece you choose. This gear is special in that it offers very high stats, however, if you fail an Enhancement, the gear will be destroyed. A good rule of thumb is to get a breakthrough piece of gear to plus four, then wait till you can get your next one, then try to enhance that one to a higher level. You won't have to worry about breakthrough gear right now, I'm just explaining it so you understand that memories of the moment are something that you'll want to buy daily. Also, having a breakthrough secondary weapon will unlock that number five slot on your skill hotbar to allow you to use more skills. Keep in mind that you do not need to buy a blessed laurel wreath here to complete this quest, you simply just need to talk to the person again. Now, moving forward, you're only going to be able to accept one of the green quests. This is because the other ones are locked behind completing the quest beforehand. However, you will receive the next quest while you're out completing the one that you've just grabbed. While doing these quests, you're going to obtain another treasure room. This one's going to be a little different from the previous ones. This one's going to require you to dodge these bubbles and collect 14 treasure chests. Keep in mind when the bubbles do hit you, you can spam left and right click to get out of them quicker. Don't worry if you don't complete it, but if you do, you will receive a treasure room reward box. After completing all of the footholds quests, you're going to receive your second blue skill attribute scroll. And now we're going to move forward with opening up the next region. You're now going to be introduced to quest letters. You get 20 of these per day. To reach level 35, I recommend taking the top three hunting quests, and that should be all that you need. You can accept the other quests if you'd like. I just know that the three hunting ones was all that I needed. Congratulations, you just reached level 35. Now this is going to be the end of this guide. However, I'm going to make a follow-up one. It's going to be level 35 to 40. Now the next guide is going to go pretty deep into the systems that Elyon has, and we'll also be referencing the guides that I've released prior on my channel in order to arm you with the most knowledge that I can to ensure that you understand these systems enough to make better decisions moving into the later stages of the game. I would like to thank you for your time, and I appreciate you watching. I hope this video helps you out in any way possible. If you liked it, please be sure to leave a like. I post Elyon content every other day, so feel free to subscribe and hit the bell. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Also, any feedback or comments are very much appreciated. Please feel free to leave them below. And leave any guide ideas you have as well. Happy grinding on Elyon. Peace.